we say thank you that is not like you if all of our ears could be tongue it is not enough to sing of your praise we've come to say thank you we've come to say thank you with a grateful heart we've come to say thank you we worship you jesus we worship you jesus we worship you jesus you are word 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 for in jesus name we are prayed in one minute all over this i just released a song to him this morning worshiping from the depth of your heart the bible says those are worshiping it says they worship him in truth and in spirit worshiping with a with an with a, 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 uh, intentionally worshiping with all of your heart express your love to him say father i thank you you can worship him in spirit you can sing a beautiful song to him it is not about a popular song it is not about you having the best voice it is about you coming with a heart of gratitude say father i worship him you are worthy to be praised you are worthy to be praised our redeemer we worship you our strength our seed our buckler we say thank you Banik Banisa and Saya, Ogbo Monija, Kewo Bonija, Ekwa Kofara, Kabi Ohosi, your word, your word, your word is to be praised. You are worthy 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 to be praised. Alpha, we say thank you. Jehovah, we worship you. We lift your name on high. We lift your name on high. We worship you. We join the 24 elders. We join the host of, host of heaven. I will say hallelujah to your name. We say Hosanna, Hosanna to the one who is upon the throne. There is none like you. There is none like you. I held that shot up by other behind those shot of our hand. Father, we say thank you. Father, we say thank you. Father, we say thank you. For in Jesus' name we are praying. You've been faithful, Lord, from the ages past. Oh, that is why your name, oh Lord, is forever. Oh, you've been faithful, Lord. You've been faithful from the ages past. From the ages, oh, that is why your name. That is why your name. Oh, look on love is forever more. Open your mouth and worship him this morning. Say, Father, we glorify your name. You are a faithful God. You never fail. Father, we say thank you. 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 For in Jesus' name we are praying. In 30 seconds, just say, Father, as your word comes this morning, Father, let it light up my path. The Bible says, He said the word to Jacob and light up the whole Israel. Say, as your word comes to me this morning, let it light up me. Let it light me up. Let it light up my destiny. Let it transform me. Let it transform me. Let it be as a light unto my path. Let it transform me. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray this morning. Open your mouth and pray this morning. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Your and pray. As your work come this morning, Father, let it light up my path. Let it transform me. Let it transform him. Let it transform me. Let it transform him. Let it transform me. Let it transform me. Let it transform him. Let it transform me. Let it transform me. Let it transform me. Let your word transform me this morning. Transform me by your word. 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 Transform me this morning. Transform me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, who is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up.
name we worship it. Holy Spirit, we invite you once more. Come and fill this place with your presence. Come and speak to us this morning. Come in your might. Come in your fullness. Come with everything. Jesus left us in your hands. And we can do nothing without you. Holy Spirit, I submit myself, my senses, everything in me. Help me, Lord. Make my tongue to be this like the pen of a ready writer. Let me speak in one voice, but let people hear me in their different needs. Lord, we call upon you, even those that will trust, that will be online now, may they begin to connect. Lord, this is unto you, not unto man. We have no need, we have no reason to be doing this for ourselves. We are doing it to move your kingdom. Lord, we ask you, Father, let your presence be felt today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can somebody put his hands together? Um, this is the fifth month, the month of May. And five stands for grace. Five stands for grace. And the greatest gift, or one of the greatest gifts we get from Christ is the grace that he has given to us. So this month, as we begin to dwell in a new topic, which is the month of divine provision, let the grace for provision be released right now unto us in the name of Jesus. Like I said, is for, we are talking about divine provision throughout this month. We are going to look at the, the issue of provision from different dimensions. We are going to look at why we don't receive. We are going to look at how to receive. We are going to look at our own contribution for the receiving. But this morning, I will just start the introduction to this mighty topic. Divine provision. First of all, the word divine means godly. Provision is just, you know, English language was is, is a borrowed language. When you hear the word provision, it is broken into two. It's pro and vision. And the word pro is for. So the provision means for the vision. So anywhere there is a God given vision, there is a provision. We are going to look at all of them. But to start, you see that everything starts from the beginning, from the book of Genesis. In fact, some theologists have opined that the Bible is just about three things. The perfect world, then the devil came and destroyed the world. Then, from that same Genesis, God began to walk towards rebuilding a perfect world again. So you see that in Genesis 1, before God made man, he first of all provided everything man would need, even before he brought us into the world. So this tells us that it is not God's plan that any of us should lack. He planted, he planted the trees, he made everything that we would need, and he now brought man into the picture. So God's intention is that we we'll have everything. That is why somewhere in the Bible he said that God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything that pertains. He didn't say some things. He said everything. And that includes material things. That includes finances. That includes our daily bread. So it's not God's plan that we will suffer. The thing he did. You know he created everything. He said they are good. The fruit. Everything. And even inside it he created relationship. Because he saw it and said that man should not be alone. And he made a woman to be with him. He didn't end there. The Bible records that in the cool of the evening, he himself comes down to have fellowship with man. I'm, I'm happy that our church is Eden Square. Where it all started. Where God developed relationship with man. But what happened? If you go to Genesis 1 verse 18, that was where God first blessed man. That was the first place God blessed man. 
And what's the blessing? If you read the book of Genesis 1, 28, the message version, God blessed, he said, then, then, that word is very instructive, then, meaning that all this why they were there, but in Genesis 21, 28, he said, then, God blessed them. You know what he said? Prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, and take charge. These are the four words God used in Genesis 1, 28. He said, prosper, reproduce, refill the, he said, fill the earth, and take charge. We break it down. Prosperity, if you go to Joshua 1, it talks about good success. There is something greater than success, than prosperity. It is good success. And that is when you have prospered, when you have reproduced, when you have filled the earth, and when you are in charge. That is what is known as good success. That, uh, Joshua 1, 8. But what went wrong? What went wrong? I told you that in that Genesis 1, Bible said that God used to come down in the cool of the evening. But along the line in Genesis 2, the devil appeared. And man deviated. Instead of having a cool, the normal fellowship with God, they went and had fellowship with the devil. Devil simply came in and disrupted the system. It's just like when you are running a computer and a virus comes in. You are running a system, a computer. And once virus comes, it can even be your phone. Once a virus comes in, it will begin to malfunction. If you press key A, it can, D can, can respond. So that is what happened. When devil came in, sin entered the world. So the problem of the world is not lack. The problem of the world is not anything else but sin. I'm not saying that people who do not have is because they've sinned. But along the line, the equation was disrupted. Just like in your system, in your phone or in your computer, when virus enters the system, it's not because of the fault of the system. It is the entrance. And it might come through one application. One application sinned. But it will separate, it will spread the whole virus to all other applications. I, don't, I, I hope you're getting what I'm saying now. So we need to understand that sin is the key word. Because God provided everything, but immediately the devil came in, he disrupted it. What happened? You remember that in the Bible, when man sinned, God in his anger chased them away from the garden. So they left the place of comfort. They left the place of provision. Because they moved away from the vision God had. And they moved out to make their own living. But the good news is that immediately after, God set in process the machinery to recover the earth, to recover man's, mankind from the devil. And that was when he brought in Christ. So I can actually tell you that Christ is the antivirus. Sorry, I'm speaking computer language. So God created a system. Devil came in as a virus and God created an antivirus. So the first question I ask you this morning is your system protected by the antivirus called Christ? So the problem we have in the world is sin that the devil brought. Devil came and deceived man and took over all God has provided for man. He didn't want man to serve him. He didn't wanted man to serve him. That if you serve him, he will give you all those things. He even told Jesus Christ that's the same story. He took Christ to the top of the, uh, the temple and showed him the whole world. Showed him everything good that originally belonged to us. You know what he told him? He said, just serve me. Just serve me and this thing shall become yours. Is it happening today? Yes. A lot of people, because of what they want, because of their need, because they don't, they lack, they will go and put themselves into things. They start serving the devil. Yes, devil can provide some of those things for you, but it comes at a huge price. But luckily for us, Christ did something. Devil tempted him. He told him, it's like devil told him, uh, do ritual and I'll give you all these things. Serve me. But Jesus said, no, I can't serve you because there is a, a right route to this. I came to pay the price. Christ could have done it to save himself. But Christ said, no, if I save myself, the people I came to save will not be saved. But the way to redemption is through the cross. 
So that is why I tell people the greatest gift or the greatest day that we must celebrate in the body of Christ is the resurrection of Christ, Easter. I'm not against Christmas, but Easter is key. Because check it, every other so-called religious leader was born. All of them died, but none of them resurrected. Only, I can't, I, I, I've, I've searched. No other religion, in quotes, has ever claimed that their progenitor resurrected. Only Christ did. And that was when, because the Bible said that he went into hell and he fought the devil and took the key with him. So the key to prosperity, the key to provision is with Christ. If he had obeyed the devil from the temple, he would have collected the key. He would have just given him a stipend, a peanut. And at the end of the day, Christ will come back again. But Christ said, no, I want the whole thing. And he went to the, to the grave and got it. So we need to know that Christ to pay the price for us. Therefore, he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything, not some things. God loves us. That's one thing I want us to know. Whether you lack or whether you're sick, whether anything, in any position you are, God loves us. And you say, why can I say that God loves us when things are not okay for me? It's not because of Christ. Christ has paid the price. In fact, the word salvation is a compound word. The word salvation is compound. It's a total package. Complete package. That's why um, uh, in the book of uh, Third John, the book of Third John says, I wish above all things, I wish above all things that you shall prosper and be in hell just like your soul prospered. I will explain it very well. I wish above all things that you prosper that you be in health just like your soul prosper it. It's very deep. And this, if I can talk on this, and if you can understand it very well, you see that all our challenges are not supposed to be a challenge to us. I wish above all things that you prosper. When we say prosper, we think about material things. Yes, God has given us every material thing because in the Garden of Eden, he has provided everything man needs. But you remember that there's an assignment he gave to us. He said, reproduce. That is where we miss it. He said, reproduce. He gave us three in the Garden of Eden. He didn't give us cheer. He gave us minerals. He gave, didn't give us a, a, a aeroplane. He gave us knowledge. He didn't give us electricity. So what God said, I've given you the raw materials. Use it to reproduce. And when you reproduce, you feel the earth. When you feel the earth, you take charge. You see the process. God has given us everything. And somebody says, but you are not giving me car. I remember at the time when I got to Lagos, around 1997, I started doing my business. I saw some of my friends and I was like, wow, God, if only you would give me a laptop. If you give me a laptop, I will be made. I got the laptop. Next time I was like, hmm, I need an office. If only I can have an office. Everything is settled. And later got an office. Next time I was like, hmm, this car. I got a car. And I found out that all those things does not have the answer to my need. The answer to my need is on my inside. And that is what is happening now. A lot of Christians are asking God to give to them, to provide for them what he has already given them. But they just need to work on it and reproduce. So the Bible says, I wish above all things that you shall prosper, be in health, and just as your soul prosper. So the key word there is your soul. I remember I was doing a teaching about soul. Soul is of three components. You have the soul. In a man is a, is, is a, is a spirit that lives in a body and has a soul. So the soul is the core of our being. And inside that soul, we have three other components. The way power, the intellect, and the emotion. God says, I wish that your soul, which is spiritual, so you, for you to become very prosperous, so for you to be prosperous and be in sound health, you must have a spiritual leverage. Very important. But a lot of people are running around. Remember, this is an introduction. We are talking about divine provision. So I want to set a template on which we are going to run throughout the months. So I'm basing it that for us to be, for us to have divine provision, we must have a good spiritual and that spiritual base is for us to understand that in salvation, Christ has given us everything. That same God 
redemption from sin? Is the same salvation that gives us sound health? Is it the same salvation that, that gives us financial liberty? In fact, let me put it like this. The same grace that can give you 1,000 naira is the same grace that will give you 1 million. It's about your faith. The same grace. Why you are praying for a thousand? Somebody is praying for one million. In fact, there's a, there's, a, there's a sketch of a man who came to an altar and was praying to God for like 100 million. One other guy came to the same altar and was making noise, shouting, Father Lord, I need one. Uh, I think he was talking about 10,000 naira. The big man touched him and brought out what he was praying for and gave to him and said, Please go. You are disturbing me and God. The same grace. One is asking for 10, one is asking for 100 million. It's the same grace. Christ will not die two times for you to have 1 billion. Think about it. I know in the Bible they say Salah. Think about it. The same grace. But the key is inside of you. A lot of time, one of the problems we are going to look at, one of the things we are going to look at is that a lot of time, what do we ask for? We normally ask God how we want him to solve our problem. Somebody is asking God, Father Lord, I need 5 million naira for a car. I need 5 million naira for a car. I need to, I need, I need 100 million to build a house. God will be laughing because he might be saying like, look, must you have the, million, the, the more money to buy the car? How about if I give you a car? How about if I give you an already done building? But you're saying, God, I need the money. So a lot of time we ask for good things, the right thing, but we give God prescription. I, God, I want you to give me through this channel. I want you to be, but God is saying, look, take away your eyes from this. Focus on this and this will come. So we are going to look at all these things. How do we ask? Uh, in the book of James, we were saying that we ask and we ask like this. And a lot of, th and a lot of time again, when we have need, we begin to fret. Once your system is scattered, you cannot concentrate. You can't concentrate. So, first of all, he wished above all things that we shall prosper. So, it is God's desire. It is his desire that we must prosper. God is not wicked. In fact, David said, I was young. Now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Spiritual, righteous, forsaken. Nor is seed made for bread. I have done it so many times. A lot of times, for instance, when it's time for school fees, and that I just go go to God. Father Lord, the children you're giving to me, they need, I'm, in fact, I'm not their father. I'm their custodian. You are their father. Pay their school fees. And somehow, God pays the school fees. So we must get to a point we know how to relate with God. A lot of us relate with God from a fear factor point of view. And the way we look at prayer, again, is some other thing that a lot of times, I am not a traditional prayer person. I'm a radical prayer person. And what do I mean about radical? At times I'm walking on the road, and the prayer point is not in my mind. Because the Holy Spirit is a person. He is a person. And he's with me. He said, I will neither leave you nor forsake you. Which means that even as I was on the road, he's there. When I'm in the toilet, he's there. So when it's time he inspires you something in your heart, it's time for you to communicate. Prayer is a two-way thing. You pray to God and you allow him to minister to you back. So at times I'm walking on the road and I will just, if something comes to my mind, I just say, Holy Spirit, Father Lord, what do you think? What should I do? I'll give a testimony. When I was single, because when we talk about provision, it's not just about material things. Peace is a provision. Sound health is a provision. Anything at all, knowledge is a provision. There are some times you're looking for an information, you won't get it. And you say, Holy Spirit, help me. And he will lead you to where you get the, the, the information. That's provision. I think I'm correct. Okay. Before, I, when I was single, I married as a born-again Christian and I knew I don't want to make a mistake. A lot of time, 
things you want. It's luxury. I'm not saying that God is not allowing us to have luxury. But my life is different from my neighbor. And we normally say that life is in places and men are in sizes. So we must know what to ask God. When you need financial assistance, sometimes God will not come the way you want. So why do we miss our divine provision? This still in introduction because as the week goes on, we're going to take them specifically and work on them. If you look at the word divine, divine is godly. From God. And God is not physical. Hello? God is not physical. So whatever we are going to get from God will not be physical. Is it clear? Whatever we want from God cannot come to us physically. It's like you have a relative in America and you call on the person and say, please, I want to pay my house rent. I want to do this and do that. He will send you a dollar because the currency they spend in America is dollar. The same thing, when we pray to God, God, I need provision. God will not send you Naira. There is no Naira in heaven. God will give you provision through supernatural means and they will come spiritually. They will come in form of revelation. They will come in form of, in form of grace. They will come in form of favor. They will come in form of ideas. What do you do? The same way you take your dollars to the malam, to do the change, to do conversion. That is the same way you take the revelations and the things God has given to you and convert it to physical. What does it, what do I mean? It might mean that you walk, you have your part. You have to work on it. God give you God. You say God, I need money. God cannot give you money. He can only give you ideas on how to make money. Then God gives you the idea. You say no, God, I need money. Mind you, God is divine. He is not physical, so He will not give you anything physical. Let's settle it. Praise the Lord. Okay. The next one, like I said before, is provision. Divine provision. So. And I say that pro is for. Vision is assignment. Vision is an assignment. An assignment to be carried out. So, God does not finance our own dream. God can only finance a dream he has given to you. But if it is from him, you run it alone. God does not finance our idiosyncrasies. Lord, I want to, I want to dress to oppress. You provide the money for yourself. But when you say, Lord, I want to pay school fees, I want to a shelter, I want to help humanity. Let me say this. One of the richest set of people in the whole world are the Bokovi and Bukist. Check it everywhere. There was a time Bill Gates and uh, one other, when they were the first two uh, richest men, Bill Gates and uh, one of the other, they shared their wealth. Today, where are they? They are still some of the richest people in the world. Why? They are giving to humanity. Back to the assignment God gave to us. He said, prosper. After you have prospered, he said, reproduce. In fact, no man is rich until you can reproduce your richness. If God gives you one million, he expects that by in the next one month or two months, three months, you should be able to give him two million. That is why a lot of people who win lottery end up being poorer than they were before they won, won the lottery. Because it is not from their talent. They don't have the capacity to reproduce it. Am I communicating? So, provision is not just God pulling money from you. Yes, it happens sometimes in the Bible, but it was to a purpose when man have fell from the heavens. It was to a purpose. And do you remember that immediately the children of Israel got into promised land? Man has ceased. So, in the course of these things, we are going to look at it. Why should man assist? It's not the plans of God that you should be living on miracle. Miracle is not an everyday thing. Miracle is, is divine interruption of a natural occurrence. And it happens once in a while. You might live the whole of your life. You might not witness miracle. As per. But the truth of the matter is that every day we are a miracle. Because the fact that we are breathing is a miracle. The fact that if you check your heart, your heart has never stopped even for one day since you were born. It's a miracle. But it's God's design. But God's plan is that he will 
provide any time we are in obedience to his directive. Anytime the assignment is being followed, once it's from God, and what do I mean by assignment? It's not only when God uh, touches you, my son, go, no, no, no. There are times God, you know you are doing the right thing. You know you are doing the things he called us to do from Genesis and even to Revelation. God will finance it. So, we need to be in sync with God's vision. Once you're doing God's vision, he will definitely um, provide. I like, 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 like myself, let me give you a testimony again on that. Because I like using my life as a testimony. When I was about to marry, I was an editor of <laughs> one backyard newspaper, his first paper then. My weekly pay was 2000 That was in the year 2001. No, 2000, yes, 2001. For you to understand what I mean by provision, when you are in, in sync, I kept on praying and God told me it's time to marry. And I looked around me. My siblings, they are not excited that I was born again. I was the first person that, that, that understood what being born again is since 1992. In as I didn't understand fully the import of what I was doing, but I, I became a Christian. I was going to church. I got to Lagos. 20, 1996, 2000, and the year 2000, I felt strong that the next move in my life is to get married. If not, I will be stagnated. I got into a relationship. But then I told my cousin, get my everybody said, ah, with what? They were not so keen about it. They think they said they were still, yeah, I have some of them, they were comfortable, but they were not so keen. But I prayed about it. It was from God. My woman that is my wife now was working. Salary was not too fantastic, but at least regular salary. I'm doing my job as a journalist and behold, brethren, we started planning marriage. And in within one year, we wedded. After the wedding, we sat down and checked. It was a good wedding, not a backyard wedding. It was a wedding that had generals come. A lot of people came. But after the wedding, we sat down and checked. For you to know where I was coming from, I was living with my elder sister. It was three weeks to my wedding that I went to pay for a house. Before then, I've written that I would like to live in a two-bedroom apartment bungalow. I didn't know what I was saying. And funny enough, I paid for two-bedroom apartment bungalow. A nice place with flowers. After the wedding, we sat down to check our expenditure. I don't know how much it is, but the truth is that everything we did, the only thing I paid for from my purse that did not come back was the suit I wore. My wife, wedding gown, was paid for. Okay, it wasn't paid for. She bought the material. The auntie sold for her. And every other thing that, three days to my wedding, I got the gift of a good cow. Somebody who had nothing. In that wedding, if we say we have up to 2,000 people, we won't be late. What am I saying? It was God's plan for me then. And by faith, I did in. And the wedding happened. It was after the wedding, I moved into the house. And since that day, it became a, a denominator that in my house, once things get to the head, we remind God where we are coming from. Just like David. When David confronted Goliath, he reminded God, he told them, I was in the bush. The lion came and I tore it up. Who is this? The same grace that made me to wed when I had no money has been the same grace carrying me to today. So we need to start trusting God from small things. When you begin to do those small things, our faith will grow because most of divine provisions come through faith. What the devil does is that once there is no cover in your pocket, he will tell you, you are finished. You won't have lunch and I assure you, you won't have dinner. The guy will just begin to lose his cool. But God has a directive. What did he say? If you go to the book of Philippines, he says, which is one of the Bible verses I have used, and in the recent time, it's like, um, for me, it's like my, in quote, my juju. He says, uh, Philippines 4, 6, he says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. That is, don't worry about anything. There's no money in your pocket, do not worry. And somebody says, how, how will it be happen? It has happened to me so many times. It has happened to me so many times. He said, be anxious for nothing. What the devil does is that he will push you and show you the negative picture. And once the negative picture comes, the next thing that comes is fear. And fear is the opposite of faith. And God says, by faith, you overcome. Without faith, no 
man can please God. So the first thing is that you found out that there's no money, no food in the house. Do you believe that God can do it? And if, yes, if you believe, the first thing to do is to talk to God. But devil gives you fear. And we break down fear. F-E-A-R. What does it mean? False expectations appearing real. Hello? And we said that faith comes by hearing. Fear also comes by hearing. If somebody comes in here now and starts telling you, there is no food in the house, we didn't eat last night, and there is nothing to eat in the night, the next thing you do is that you are, ah, what will I do? But if you get that report, and you go back to God, and say, God, there is no food in the house, please provide us with food, daddy. He has his own way. Either somebody comes here and gives you raw food, or you get the money. But how you do it is not your own. He surprised the children of Israel by sending manna for them from above. The same thing happened. There's also a story in the Bible of when God supplied the, in fact, he disrupted the economy of a nation positively. There was female in the land, and in fact, they were killing themselves. Women would kill their children and share their meat and whatever. That the prophet said, it won't ha- you will not have anything. He now told the king, by this time tomorrow, the economy will be very buoyant. And I want to tell somebody here, here, listen to me, your economy will be buoyant. Your economy will be buoyant. I'm speaking under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Believe it in your mind. Believe it in your heart. Your economy will be buoyant in the name of Jesus. The Bible said that the advisor on whose hand the king lays, which has been interpreted to be the economic advisor, economic minister or finance minister said, even if God opens the heaven imagine that can you imagine somebody you believe that God can open heaven and drop things, and he said that even if it will not work so he has faith that God can do open heaven and drop food but he doesn't believe that that those food can change the economy about it. He said it will not happen. Which is one of the biggest problems we have in our, when we want God to do provision for us. Is we begin to trust in ourselves. We begin to trust in our certificates. We begin to trust in the relationship we have. The king, listen to me, is an economic advisor. And the economic advisor has studied economy in school. And he said there is no economic theory that supports what you are saying. But when God is involved, theories are shattered. When God is involved, theories are shattered. So that is where you hear that some people will go to sleep. You get up in a day and you pray. What God will do is that you meet, help you to meet your vision helper. I don't believe in lottery. I don't believe in people getting sudden money. What God does is it's better that he takes you from one step to the other. Because what he's doing is that he will help you to reproduce when you start. But he will first of all give you the seed. He says in the Bible that God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. It's a different, we'll talk about that in the course of this train, train uh, uh, in this course of devote, divine provision. When God gives us seed, and when he gives us bread. Seed is investment. Bread is for consumption. There are two different things. If you eat your seed, and that's the problem a lot of us have, you are trusting God for money, God provides you with the money. You see it as a seed. You see it as, as a bread. I'll give you an example. I used to know one lady in my former church. That time, money had a lot of weight. I don't know what she was doing there, but she was in the choir. She made, you know, in a church where everybody wants to be recognized, she made some money. That time, we told her, why don't you invest it? Then she said, no, that she wants to buy a car. She bought a car. 
pastor said, I know that in church he wants to talk about seed. We look at it as just coming to drop money for church. I'm not against that. If God leads you to go and drop money in a church or even in this ministry, it's fine. But there is money for investment. There is money for expenditure. Very clear. So, provision is about vision. There must be a divine vision to attract divine provision. There must be a divine vision to attract a divine provision. If your vision is earthly, is what is personal, whoever gives you vision should provide you with the seed to the vision, the provision to run with it. God does not finance our greed or our um, wastefulness. We ask and we don't receive because we are selfish. A lot of us are selfish. When people pray, Father Lord, I need money for um, uh, I should be in quote. I give another testimony, not for myself. I remember teaching in Bible school and um, we were talking about finances, about provision. One lady was just like, I can't do anything. And the way it happened that day, she was going for a wedding and she came for the class. She was just like, things are hard. This is that. that. We were we like, we have business that. This I'm talking about like uh, 2002. We have business that you can start in 2010. Big business. She said, I don't have it. I said, can you stand up? By the time we calculated what she was wearing, I should be. She bought new shoes. This, this and that. Everything. It was almost 18,000 naira. And we said, God has given you seed. And you are going to wedding to go and impress people who do not even know that you exist. If you miss this wedding, will somebody die? So we must know that God's design is not that we come to him every day. That's why he says, I think Paul said that he who does not work. He said, he said every man should have something to as his work. We must have work. And a lot of us are not ready to work. I know a young man that I moved into an estate. I knew him just selling recharge card in 2022, 2002. Selling recharge card. Today, as I'm talking to you, he got married. He will open a laundry. He's riding a jeep. He's a very comfortable young man. Has three children. Why? He started laboring. When they were selling recharge card, 15 naira, 100 naira. He started. So, when we talk about divine provision, it's not about us every day, every week, every month. Um, Lord, I need money for my house rent. Lord, I need money for school fees. Lord, I need money for... That is not what God... He wants us to do greater things. So we are going to look at all those things. Um, a lot of times, look at the Bible. The servants, look at the story of um, Jonah. Jonah was given an assignment to go to Nineveh. He wanted to run away. He didn't ask God for provision. He didn't ask God. He ran away. He took his own money and he took off in the opposite direction. God still provided him with provision to make sure that he got to where he asked him to go. But because he had a special grace, they threw him into the sea. The fish became a provision to take him and vomit him out in Nineveh. And he still did the assignment. <laughs> but I laugh about Jonah. You remember he later told God, why did you uh, I preach to them now and they repented? So he didn't want them to repent. But God wanted to use him. So when we talk about divine provision, we need to talk about our faith. What is your faith? What are you trusting God for? Are you moving from one end to the other? And if God should drop you with 10 million naira today, what are you going to do with it? A lot of us have no plan, no vision. If we are just living our life, every day we get up, we move out, and we do not think about how to make tomorrow better. So in this month of divine provision, along the line, we are going to call for prayers. We are going to even do like a fast in a day and pray about it and trust God for specific things. And that will confirm to us that God is a God of provision. And in this month of May, the month of grace, God will give us a special grace for us to move from where we are to another, to higher place. So, talking back to the issue of um, God says, be anxious for nothing. I want us to close with that. He says,
says, be anxious for nothing. For weeks. He says, be anxious. He says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything. Every. Everything. Everything. For some of us, our own divine provision is, Lord, I want to build a mansion. But somebody is actually trusting God to give him transport money to go to Ikeja, to go to Ireland. Somebody right now is watching me. His, his or her own need is, Lord, I need transport money to the office tomorrow. The same grace. The same grace. But God says, be anxious for nothing. And he said, in everything, not in some things, there is no food in the house. It's part of it. He said, in everything. He says, um, by prayer, in everything. So the first thing is prayer. You, you lack money. You don't have provision for something. The first thing God says, in everything, prayer. Prayer. And like I said, Prayer is not you coming before God and shouting, shouting, shouting. It is a one-way communication. Prayer is a two-way thing. So it means that after you've told God, Father Lord, I need money, S amount of money, I need this, I need that. You also cool down for God to tell you, my son, I've heard you. But the plans I have for you is not for you to do this. For instance, you want to go to America. There are people who are doing everything possible. Lord, provide me with the visa. I want to go to America. And God's plan for the person is not that you go to America. Do you get me? And you are praying. You say you prayed. And God is telling you, I don't want you to go to America. But you did not want to hear God. So tomorrow, the visa will not come. Something will happen along the line. He said that God didn't make provision for you. He was telling you that America is not your destiny. So when we pray, we must also ask, ask God to, to listen to. We must also listen to God. He now says, and that thing says, with supplication. Supplication. Then he now talks about thanksgiving. He now talks about thanksgiving. In, he now says, let your request, let your request be made unto God. So whatever need you have, the key to it is talking to God. But a lot of people do not have the time to concentrate. They wish it. Wishing is not prayer. Thinking about it is not prayer. Worrying about it is not prayer. Prayer is only when you get to God and ask him, Daddy, I have need of this. And if he is in line with it, he will provide it for you. If he is not in line with it, he will inspire you towards the line that he has wanted to move on to. I was young. Now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. I'm going back to that verse. I was young. I was, now I am old. This is David talking. In old age, I have never seen this righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. God's grace is available. God's mercy is available. God's favor is available. All of them are together in what you call salvation. And when we talk about salvation, salvation simply means to be saved. It's not only to be saved from sin. God can save you from shame. God can save you from disgrace. God can save you from lack. All of them are salvation. So when we are praying, God, Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary and he died so that we can have all round salvation. All round salvation. So in everything, let us remember that the blood of Jesus was shed for our own salvation. So this morning, I call you up. Can we stand to be on our, on our feet? We are going to pray. Lord, as we started this uh, month of divine provision. I call upon you to make your grace overshadow me. Let your, shad let your wisdom overshadow me. Let your favor come upon me. Give me a divine grace for relating with you. Just like in the Garden of Eden, a place of relationship where we can talk. So for you to have divine grace, you, divine provision, you must have divine relationship divine relationship. Please concentrate. Divine relationship first. We ask God for divine. Lord, help me to key in and have a divine relationship with you. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Father, King of glory, we pray that you give us divine. We have a divine relationship with you. That we have come to a place of relationship. A place of fellowship. A place, Lord God, King of glory, that we, we 
we interact with you and we hear you so that we, we know your mind. Help us to know your mind at every point in time. Help us to know what your intent and purposes are for us. Even when we ask and we ask and miss, Lord, help us to know what your mind is. We pray in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. We pray again. Father, in this mood of divine provision, lead me to a clear-cut vision. Lead me to a clear-cut vision. That is the only time you can provide for me. We know that provision is for the vision. Lord, help me to key in into your vision. Help me to key in into your vision so that when you provide for me, I will not waste it. I will invest it. I will invest it brightly. I will invest it in the vision you are giving to me. And that vision will be for a testimony in the name of Jesus. Father, King of Lord, we bless you. Lord, we thank you. We magnify your name. Let us pray for God's favor. God's favor. Would they say that a single day of favor is better than a thousand years of labor? We pray for favor. Lord, favor me. Favor me divinely. Favor me in the name of Jesus. Favor me. Favor me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let your grace come upon me. Let your favor come upon me, Lord. I don't want to live based on my labor. Help me to live based on your favor, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we bless your name. We thank you, Father, for your word today as we depend on you for divine provision. Lord, teach us this month on how to attract your divine provision. As we come before your throne every week, every day, we ask you, Father, Lord, let your word be made manifest in our, in our prayer in our knees in the name of Jesus and direct us to our source in the name of Jesus. Help us to know your direction. Help us to discover where our, our provisions are kept and we shall take it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. I want us to still put our heads down. You are listening to me or you heard my message this morning, the message God brought to you and you do not have a personal relationship with God. You could see that the first thing God wants is a relationship. Once you are a child of God, it is dependent on God. It is, it, it is God's responsibility to take care of you. So, first of all, I will ask you, do you know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? Our provision is in his blood. All your provision is in his name. So, this morning, if you don't have a personal relationship with Christ, I want to ask you to consider it and to surrender your life to him. If you are listening to me here or you are online, I want to ask you to put your hand on your chest and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, today I accept that I'm a sinner. I accept that I don't have a relationship with you. But I come to you this morning and I surrender. I proclaim you and I thank you for your death on the cross of Calvary for my sins. Today I give my life to you and I ask you to come into my life. Be my Lord and my personal Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray with you now. Father, King of glory, you say that those who come to you shall know my, in no way despise, Lord. I lift up everyone who has represented this prayer. I ask you, Lord, to accept them into your kingdom. Send your spirit to them right now and help them, Lord God Almighty, in their new work as, as believers. Let every old thing pass away, Lord. They are now new creations, Lord. Let the hand of your grace find them today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. If our adventure you say that prayer, you are now born again. I will just admonish you to find a Bible believing church around you and just go to the pastor and tell him that you just said the prayer, sinner's prayer, and he will direct you. But if you stay around here uh, in Lagos, you can just check our website. You can check, uh, uh, send us a message on our Facebook page. We'll get back to you. We'll send you some materials and we can contact you and pray for you further. And every Sunday, you can log on here if there's no church around you. But even if there is a church, you can go to your church and still log on. And the good thing is that every time, every moment you like, you can actually log on to our Facebook page and uh, you get this message prayed all over again. Or even if you miss our message every Sunday, and 